It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi everyone, I'm Gary Shorman. This is the Forum on Eagle Community Television. Our guest is Errol Wirtz and congratulations, 45 years with the Civil Air Patrol. That's exciting. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, one of the things when we were talking about programs, we bring special people onto this program and we talk about events and things that go on in our community that really are exceptional. And anytime you do anything for 45 years is cool, mm -hmm. but the Civil Air Patrol, one, people don't know much about it, and two, to be a part of it for that long has to be a, a nice pleasure. Well, it is. And uh, of course, it's a volunteer organization, and some of the things that you do are actually life-saving missions, and uh, that's very important. We well, you know, I, I fly, as you know, and so you're out there, and, but that's, that's been an important part of our airport to have the Civil Air Patrol out there. What is, in general, for the viewers out there who've never heard of this, what is the Civil Air Patrol? Civil Air Patrol is an auxiliary of the United States Air Force, and they're celebrating 75 years this year. It was started in World War II by volunteers who flew parts and personnel during the war, and they also flew over the East Coast looking for submarines, and supposedly they sunk one with a bomb that they dropped. And uh, so it's, it's quite an organization. And so 75 years of serving the public, and uh, there's three missions for that. One is emergency services, one is the cadet program, and then there's uh, aerospace education. Well, that, that adds to a lot that we can talk about. It's not a three-hour show, so we'll have to <laughs> condense that down a little bit. What does that mean to those of us in Western Kansas? Because you probably haven't had a chance to sink any submarines out here. No. But what, what is the goal of the Civil Air Patrol in Western Kansas? Well, you mentioned being at the airport. We used to have a plane here, and uh, one of the big things that they do are blood runs, but the FAA has now said that Pilots who fly blood runs must have a commercial license. Well, a lot of mm -hmm. Civil Air Patrol members don't have that, so we drive. And that's why I got an award, in addition to the 45 years, I got a life-saving award for driving blood from Hayes Medical Center up to Smith Center in January. And uh, I did another one uh, a month ago where I picked up blood in Plainville and took it to Salina and somebody from Wichita came up and picked it up and took it to Salina. I mean to Wichita. Well, that's one of those things you don't think about of that, just that side of the business where somebody, there's an emergency somewhere along the line, you need transport. Obviously airplanes are a quick way to get things in our part of the world back and forth for doing right. that and making that happen. Now, did you start young being a pilot? how did you get into the Civil Air Patrol? Well, you don't have to be a pilot to be in Civil Air Patrol. That's even better. <laughs> so anybody out here can be in the Civil Air Ab Patrol. Absolutely. But you have to have an interest. You have to have you an have, interest and you have right. to like airplanes otherwise because that's well, a lot of your, your time. Uh, airplanes or the outdoors because the cadet program uh, is ground search. They're trained in searching the ground for lost persons or downed aircraft. Uh, the air, aircraft part of it you said you have to, I don't have to be a pilot, but you can be an observer in an aircraft and you can be a scanner in an aircraft because there's three people in an aircraft, pilot, observer, scanner, and they look for downed aircraft. And then they coordinate with the ground crew who's mo mostly made up of cadets. And uh, they, once the airplane finds the location of the plane, they direct the ground crew in to see if there are any survivors. Well, that's an interesting process in and of itself. Did you get into it because you liked uh, the Civil Air Patrol in general, their mission, or how did you get started 45 years ago? Oh, I liked the opportunity that it presented, and I had a son who liked planes, and he was in the cadet program. Uh, he's now a commercial pilot. He's got about 20,000 hours of flying time, flies all over the world. And I, m I must admit, we also had two cadets here that went to uh, the Air Force Academy uh, one spent his four years that he had to after graduation. The other is Les Hawk. I don't know if you n knew. I just the know Hawk the name, thing. yes. Okay. He is a major in the Air Force, uh, an assistant commander or a vice commander of an F-16 squadron in Afghanistan. And he started in Hayes in the Civil Air Patrol. Well, those are the stories that make this program so interesting when you go back and kind of look at how that has transpired and grown. Who all has been in the Civil Air Patrol? I know Dr. Witten. I ended up flying Dr. Witten's airplane for a while, mm -hmm. and because I still have some Civil Air Patrol records from uh -huh. some of the flights that, that he took around yes. the area. Morris Witten and uh, Terry Worth, who has moved, uh, he and I and uh, Kaylin Phillip, mm -hmm. uh, we were 
pretty much the air crews around here and we'd get called maybe two or three o'clock in the morning and say there's a an ELT going off in western Kansas you guys need to go out and find out where it's at mm -hmm. and so Morris was our main pilot and uh, we did a lot of flying with Morris and we also went up to South Dakota to uh, a competition and came in second which I thought was pretty good for us. To the, an ELT, for those of you who are not a pilot, that's that emergency locator beacon right. uh, that actually goes and, and will help locate a downed aircraft because it sends out a ping mm -hmm. or a squawk and right. it continues to do that. So you can listen on, a, what is it, channel 122.5? Yes, and then sometimes, you never do this, but sometimes pilots land too hard and, and it, it sets, sets that, that off. off. <laughs> so there's been many that we found that we had to take the lock off a, a hangar out in western Kansas and get in and turn it off. But we've also had, uh, we also had several that we found downed aircraft. In fact, there was a downed aircraft by Nest City, southeast of Nest City, and uh, friends were looking for the aircraft. They spent two days doing that before they notified the Civil Air Patrol. Called us, and within a half hour we found the plane. And was that because of the ELT that was pinging? Just our search procedures what the radar showed where the plane was at its last location and then we fly grids mm -hmm. and you go back and forth on those grids where people you know probably just fly all over they don't have a specific way to search an area and uh, we found oh, everybody was dead in the unfortunately but we did find the aircraft and got the sheriff there and they took care of the the remains well, when you when you do that, is there a training involved? If oh, somebody yes. wants to be involved in the civil absolutely, air there are probably four to five practice missions every year, and they're held in various parts of the state. And you train to be a mission, but you have to have 200 hours of flying time to be a mission pilot, and then mm -hmm. you have to you have to go through certain uh, procedures to become a mission pilot. Then you have to become a person who doesn't fly but wants to be in the aircraft becomes a mission observer and you there's certain curriculum that you have to follow to get that the same thing with a scanner well it's such an interesting side of it because you don't think until you have an aircraft that's down somewhere what that challenge is to be able to do that you mentioned a couple other parts uh, the cadet program what is that what's that all about those are uh, obviously young people, young but young people from the sixth grade up to through high school and it's uh, kind of a, an elevated boy scout type mm -hmm. thing and what's interesting to me is that we had a mission going on in Salina and a young man was sitting there and a retired Air Force colonel who was in the Civil Air Patrol says, why, why do you like Civil Air Patrol? And he said, I like the discipline. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's basically military. I mean, mm -hmm. you follow military commands and protocol and everything else. And I thought that was very impressive that a young man would say, I like it because of that. Well, when you see things happen, you know, a lot of times you hear and see the news, whatever, and when you do, you're out there and it's like, well, who's out there searching? Mm -hmm. And at some point, that's a volunteer effort right. that is all a result of early on people coming out of the Air Force and, and mm -hmm. changing into the Civil Air Patrol. Yes. Where does, where does somebody go to find out about that? Uh, I mean, if you want to become a member, want to come out, volunteer, want to be a you, part of this? You can go on their website. Find you. To find me. They uh -huh. can go on the website. Uh, we don't have a unit here anymore. I'm the only one in western Kansas, and there's only one guy in southwest Kansas. Uh, I'm attached to the wing headquarters, which is in Salina. And I might say that there's a wing in every uh, one of these United States, states, the 50 states. Yeah. You and we talked a little bit earlier, there's some special events that go on that one has to be coming up uh, this weekend or it's on August 6th, I believe. Is that August the right? 6th at the... What's taking place? Well, the Air Force is putting on their demonstration of uh, aircraft. Uh, they'll probably be F-16s and maybe B-52s, possibly B-1s. And they will be at the practice range that's west of Salina. There are directions on how to get there. And the gates open at 8 o'clock and it runs from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And if you want to see Air Force planes in action, that's the place to be. For those of us that do some flying, you'll see that because there's certain restricted areas you can't fly through. And there's a reason because they're doing these bombing runs and things right. that you typically can't see. Now, if you want to go look at that, say if Brandon wants to take his family over, <laughs> do they just drive right up under the bombing range or is there a place to well, go? Well, no, they have bleachers where you sit. You sit in bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds a little bit scary. I'm not sure. But, but they're really good about doing that and oh, then yes. explaining what's going on. Yeah. I, I have to say also that Civil Air Patrol is very safety minded. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have to meet certain safety requirements. You, I have to have a safety briefing every month. If I don't have a safety briefing, I can't participate in any of the activities. So 
that's, that's a prime concern of Civil Air Patrol. You know, the, the safety side of this is, is so big, and some of this just goes on with, when people don't even know what's taking place. Those watching, you know, who, who knew that there was a safety or a Civil Air Patrol that goes out and search and does that search and rescue? Are there other mm -hmm. re search and rescue outside of just airplane-related search and rescue? Oh, lost persons, sure. Uh, they also do disaster relief, like flooding. Uh, they'll take uh, people from the Red Cross who want to check on what, where the flooding is or emergency uh, management personnel, they'll take them up in the aircraft as well. And they also have a digital uh, camera system that will shoot a picture and send it down to the ground so they can follow things uh, from the air. All as a volunteer effort. Oh yes, yes. And I might add that after 9-11, the first aircraft in the air was Civil Air Patrol. They had them fly over New York. And the last Super Bowl in California, Civil Air Patrol was tasked with s flying around for safety reasons. And so uh, Homeland Security is also asking Civil Air Patrol to do some missions as well. Well, congratulations on 45 years of volunteering your, your efforts over there and being a part of it. What a cool, not only a cool award, but the amount of work that goes into and frankly, shows the importance of what goes on out at our airport. Because mm -hmm. if you fly sure. in and out, all you see is the big jet. But if yep. you're in the back, you see all the other things like the Civil Air Patrol that mm -hmm. goes on. Yeah. It's a good organization. And if people want to join, I would encourage them, especially if young people want to join. Because if they think they want to get into the military, there are some perks if you've been in the Civil Air Patrol. How cool is that? <laughs> hey, if you have any questions, contact Earl Wirtz about that. You can go online. Is What's the web page? Do you know that off the top? Civil Air Patrol. Just Civil Air Patrol mm -hmm. and, and go there, find that, and get more information. Now, Earl, I'm going to keep you right here because okay. this is a studio that used to be the KAYS studio. We're going to take a break. Errol was here early on. I, in fact, saw Bob Schmidt earlier today say, be sure and ask Errol about his kind of early days at KAYS. So right. we're going to take a break and come back and just talk broadcast for just okay. a little bit. Okay, all right. Errol works as our guest here on the forum. Be back after this. It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet, great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back to the second half of our forum program here on Eagle Communications and Eagle TV. Our guest is Errol Wirtz. And Errol, we were talking about the break that, uh, before the break coming back, you used to set in this very same area. Absolutely. Early on in the days of KAYS television. I, what did you do I for KAYS? I put in all the grid up here. You were the grid guy. Yeah, huh? I was the grid guy. Have all these hot lights that are yes. that smoking <laughs> down on us right now. Absolutely. So was that your first job and who did you oh, work with? Oh, no, no. I worked in, I started out in Findlay, Ohio, worked in Plymouth, North Carolina, worked in Lima, Ohio, worked in Elyria, Ohio. And then I came out here. Actually, I went to the uh, National Association of Broadcasters convention in Chicago and visited with Bob Schmidt and Bernie Brown. Uh -huh. And uh, they interviewed me there, and I had an opportunity of either coming out here or going to uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana in radio. And I thought, you know, television might be kind of neat. <laughs> so I came out here and coming on the road back then, you know, off the interstate, all these dirt roads, I thought, what am I getting myself into? And I've been here over 40 years. <laughs> isn't, isn't that amazing? Well, I know you did everything from on-camera work to now. I didn't know who put this grid up here, but it's, you know what? It's still here. Yes, I did a good job. <laughs> a very good job with that. And right now you're in the, uh, you're, you're in a uh, real estate business. Yes. Tell us about your company on that side. I'm, uh, I'm the broker owner of Heartland Realty of Hayes, and uh, we sell residential, commercial, and farm real estate, and uh, we're the best one in town. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it right here. In fact, Errol, if you want to come do this show, I mean, it sounds like you have some experience for doing this kind of program. Absolutely. As well. I used to do the weather here. And then behind us uh, is the old weather board. Uh, they didn't have the technology that they have today, although we did have weather radar. And well, that was a it, real plus then. Uh, 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 Mr. Beach, who was mm -hmm. a part owner, mm -hmm. uh, we looked at radar and it was an old radar out of an old plane and it was converted to ground use and it was outside the building on the south side here and we could look at radar and one time there was a highway patrolman in here and I said you know looks like there's a tornado there and he said really and he drove out there, and there was. <laughs> well, you could you could see we enough could, for back then that right. was big. Yes it was. 
You yeah. know, those of us that look at our cell phone and there's all the weather and you take a look at that, it, pilots today, mm -hmm. you know, you can just pull up things on your iPad and there's the weather. You pull out this weather board back here and it was back <laughs> magic marker and clouds yes. that were magnetic, if I recall. No, no magnetic. Just, no magnetic? No, yeah. just, just markers. And then Mark. you took a rag and wiped off the grease marker and started over for the next broadcast. Errol, are you ever amazed with some of the changes in today's world for technology and how they do all that? Oh yeah, it's amazing. It really is how they can just punch something and you wonder what they're punching and a different picture comes up, you know, when they're doing the weather. It, it is really nice. Errol, former weathercaster, K-A-Y-S-er, uh -huh. real estate mogul, best real estate in town, you tell me. Oh, absolutely. And 45 years with the Civil Air Patrol and a couple nice honors for running blood across and helping save people's lives across mm -hmm. Kansas. Thanks for being on the program today. Thank you very much. Great job for what you do in our community. Thank you. Appreciate Errol Works has been our guest here on The Forum. The Forum is brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy.